My name is Frank Mazzella. I'm the Learning Products Manager for Vision Research. I'm here to present a series of PCC Phantom Camera Control Software Tutorials intended to show you many of the various features and processes incorporated in PCC. In this tutorial, Capturing Your First Cine Part 1, we will walk through a few of the steps necessary to capture a Cine. Let's start by selecting the Phantom Camera we are going to record our Cine with. I'll do this by double clicking on the desired camera from the list of available cameras displayed in the Cameras group in the Manager tab. For our first Cine, I'm going to use the Phantom Mero 320S Cam 2 camera. Notice that the Live Preview panel opens for the selected Mero 320S Cam 2 camera. As you can see, the name of the camera is displayed in the header of the Preview panel and the status indicators located in the footer of the preview panel indicate that the camera is in the live or preview mode. For our first Cine, I'm going to record the launch and flight of the toy jet planes you see here. To do this, I need to click on the live tab to access the recording parameters. Notice that the camera field automatically displays the name of the camera. In multi-camera environments, the PCC software allows us to lock cameras together so that any changes or instructions we specify in the Live tab will be applied to all locked cameras. We will discuss this in greater detail in the PCC and Multi-Camera Environments video tutorials. Since I have more than one camera that I could use to record the Cine, I could, if I wanted to, select a different camera or camera group to use by clicking on the down arrow next to the Camera field and select another camera or group from the list of available cameras. Since I've already selected a camera to use, the next step I want to do is ensure that the camera is providing me with the best images possible by performing a CSR or current session reference. A current session reference is a calibration procedure similar to a black reference except that it computes the pixels offsets only for the part of the sensor that is the next greater value of the resolution set in the acquisition parameters. This way, the offsets can be computed for any resolution, sample rate, or exposure, providing a more precise compensation of the pixel errors depending on the acquisition parameters and temperature of the sensor. When applied, the CSR is only valid for the set of acquisition parameters used when the CSR was calculated. If I change any of the acquisition parameters, I'll need to perform a CSR again. So once I make all my changes, I'll need to do another CSR. To perform a CSR, I simply need to click on the CSR button located under the Cine setting selector. Since the camera has an internal automatic shutter mechanism, I won't need to cover the lens to ensure that the sensor will be void of light during the CSR process. The mechanical shutter will automatically close during the CSR process, ensuring no light is detected by the sensor. If this were a camera without an automatic shutter, PCC would have prompted me to cover the lens prior to starting the CSR, so that the sensor will be void of light during the CSR process. PCC also provides a user-friendly feature known as Auto Black Reference that can be used when a camera has either an internal or external mechanical shutter. This auto black reference feature, when enabled, instructs the camera to perform a CSR whenever the camera is placed into the recording mode automatically. To enable the auto black reference feature, I need to click the advanced settings selector, scroll down to the start end of recording actions options, and enable or check auto black reference so I won't have to manually perform a CSR every time prior to a take. The system will do it for me when I hit the capture button. For now, with this being set, I'm going to close the advanced settings selector. Since the Miro 320S Camp 2 is a color camera, I need to perform a white balance adjustment to the camera. The purpose of doing a white balance is because of the different colors of the various types of light sources. A color camera's preview image may have a different color tint 
which may not appear quite right during setup. Phantom cameras have several adjustment methods to assist in correcting image color. Using the fast and easy to use white balance control should be the first step in adjusting color. Failure to perform a white balance can result in an unsightly, unnatural color cast. White balance adjustments can be performed within a preview or play panel on RAM, integrated non-volatile flash memory, Phantom CineMag, or Cine Flash file Cine images. To perform a white balance, I'll move the cursor over an area on the image that represents white and right mouse click and click white balance in the pop-up window. If the white balance is not reliable on selected area because it contains black or saturated pixels do it anyway message appears. I'll click the no button. Then I can either move the cursor to an area that is not saturated, adjust the lens's f-stop to close down the aperture or move the cursor to an area that doesn't contain any black pixels and try again. If the message doesn't appear, the white balance adjustment was performed automatically.